All right, this series of videos, I'm going to go over uh, content from uh, section P.3. So this is the probability section at the end of the textbook, the third section of the probability chapter. Now we're going to look at random variables and probability functions. All right, so what we're going to cover in this series of videos is uh, what exactly is a random variable and looking at discrete versus continuous. We'll look at probability functions and then we'll look at finding the mean of a random variable and the standard deviation of a random variable. All right, so first definition, a random variable is a numeric quantity that changes from trial to trial in a random process. And for our class, it could be really almost anything. So looking at some examples, it could be the number of home team wins in some world in, in the World Series. If we were rolling two, you know, six-sided die, we'll do some of this in class. Uh, it'd be the sum of the two dice rolls. It could be a grade on your next statistics exam. It could be time to run one mile. It could be the weight of a rat. So you had many different rats, you would have a way, have different weights. Um, you, if you're taking the next test, you could get, say, between 0 and 100. And the sum of two dice rolls, you could get between 2 and 12. Okay, so just some examples, but there's many, many more we'll talk about throughout the semester. Okay, so when we have a variable, one way to think about a quantitative variable, so a number, a variable that measures something in terms of a number, so these are all numbers. Uh, we'll talk about discrete versus continuous, and a random variable is discrete if it has a finite set of possible values. And I think there's maybe a different way to think about this, we'll talk about in a second. So in our last example, say X is the number of home wins in a World Series. Well, that's a finite list. They could win zero, the home team could win zero games, or win um, all seven. If the home team wins every single game in the series. The sum of two dice rolls, you could roll a pair of uh, ones to get the two, all the way up to a pair of sixes to get a 12. But this is a finite list. And to contrast that with a continuous variable, random variable continuous, if it has values within some interval. So a couple of examples we looked at was time to run a mile. Well, what would the interval be between time to run a mile? Probably between, we'll say zero, although zero is not theoretically possible, but see between zero and 24 hours. Someone's really slow. So there's some time period or the weight of a rat that between zero pounds and you know, 20 pounds or whatever the weight of the largest rat is. I like to kind of think about this discrete is something you count. You count the number of home run wins. You count the number of dice that uh, land when you throw two pair of dice. So counting, discrete, you count. And continuous is measure. So how would you measure the weight of a rat? You'd put it on a scale. How would you figure out the time to run each mile? Well, you'd measure it. You'd have a timer, figure out how long it took you to run. So think discrete counting, continuous measuring, which I think is, a, is a, maybe a, more, a better way to think about it than this finite list and values within some interval. OK, so uh, the probability function is a function that assigns a probability to each value of a discrete random variable. Again, so this could be almost anything. Uh, let's take the example of the number of heads in flipping a coin twice, or flipping two coins. So imagine, you know, a quarter and a dime. You have a quarter and a dime. How many heads could you get if you flip a two coin? Well, we have four equally likely outcomes. We could get both heads. The quarter could be a tail. The dime could be a head. The quarter could be a head. The dime could be a tail. Or they both could be tails. So what are the possibilities? Again, we're looking at X as the number of heads. Well, we can get two heads, we could get one, exactly one head out of the two, or we can get zero. So we're going to write x to be zero, one, and two. So zero means we got no heads, one means we got exactly one head, and two means we got two heads. And the probability function, p of x, again going back to your uh, intermediate algebra notation, assigns a probability. So what's the likelihood or what's the probability of getting no heads? Only one way. You get two tails. That's one of four. What's the probability of getting exactly one head? There's two different ways to get that. So two over four, which reduces to a half. Or what's the probability of getting exactly two heads when you flip two coins? 
only one out of four chances, one out of four. So this right here is a probability function, and generally for almost everything in this uh, section, we're going to be looking at probability functions in terms of tables. So kind of get used to writing tables for writing these probability functions. And note that for any probability function, we have um, we have this uh, identity that if you add up this this uh, it's called a summation symbol. You may or may not have seen it before, but all this symbol means is add up all these values. One quarter plus a half plus a quarter equals one. So that is actually the definition of a probability function. The probabilities have to sum, add up to one. Okay, I said before, let's take the sum of two dice. Again, we'll look at a pair of dice and some more examples in class with some in-class activities. But right here, if you roll two dice and we're assuming six-sided standard die, there's 36 possibilities. 1 and 1, 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, and so on. So if we're summing them up, there's only one way to get a sum of 2. This x is the outcome. x is the sum, is to get a pair of 2s. But notice with the x equals 3, that is summing up to get 3. Imagine you have got, say, one red and one blue dice. One, one red dice and one blue. Well, you could get a... How do you sum up to three? You can get a one and a two, but there's two different ways to do that. You can get a red one and a blue two, or a red two and a blue one. So there's two ways to do that. And then so on as this list goes on, seven is the most common. You can get one and a six, six and a one, two and a five, five and a two, and three and a four, and four and a three. So the seven is the most likely outcome of all of this. But here's our... Um, probability function for the random variable the sum of two dice. So if we look at a couple examples, what is the probability that x is less than 5? And I'm going to use this table directly. Well, less than 5 would be you get a 2, 3, or 4. So you would actually take, add up the probability that you can get a sum of 2, a sum of 3, a sum of 4, add all these numbers up, 1 over 36, plus 2 over 36, plus 3 over 36, 6 over 36, to get about 17%. What about the probability that we do not get 7? Remember I said 7 is the most common outcome, but that only happens 6 out of 36 times. So instead of, I could count up everything except the 6, but I know all of these have to add up to 1. It's the definition of probability distribution function. Or think about, I could use the uh, complement rule from section P.1, 1 minus the probability of P, which is 1 minus 6 over 36, to get uh, about 83%. All right, one last question before we, we uh, move, take a break and split up the video. So the table shows a probability function. So we just have a table. We don't know what this means, but we know the outcome x could be 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50. And we're, we know there's a probability function. What is the probability of 50? Now let's talk about this. What, what do we know about a probability function? All of these probability values have to add to what? They have to add to 1. So whatever I plug in this blank right here, the probability of 50, it has to combine with the rest of these to add to 1. So what's the sum? We have total, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1, that's 0 0.2, plus 0 0.2 is 0 0.4, and then 0 0.6. What adds with 0.6 to get 1 is the 0.4. Probabilities have to add up to 1. All right, so we have this probability function. What is the probability? And interpreting this notation, this is the probability that x is less than or equal to 30. All right, so with this problem, 
Don't forget this little line means we want to include 30. So what's the probability that x is less than or equal to 30? I need to combine all of these. It could be 10, 20, or 30. We're including 30. So we get 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.2 to get 0.4 is the probability that x is less than or equal to 30. Excuse me. Okay, we're going to talk about mean and standard deviation of probability functions in the next couple of videos.